in uh, certain circumstances, it may be necessary, instead of manipulating the joints for control or pain, it may be necessary to break the joints to disable your opponent completely, including killing. Uh, I'll proceed to show you some of the various methods of, uh, of these joint breaks. Uh, for instance, let's take a, a simple shoulder grab. Uh, Jim grabs me here by the shoulder. What I'll do is I'll hold his hand to my body, raise his arm up and over to this position. Now, downward pressure on his elbow joint will cause it to break with very little effort. Uh, a very hard slap will break the joint uh, quite easily. Also, turning over his arm into this position, I can easily snap his wrist instead of causing him pain, completely breaking both of these joints. I can begin with a snap here if I feel like it. A quick push will snap the joint in that direction. Uh, let's say uh, he was to punch me. As uh, Jim throws a punch, I would step back, close these two hands in a snapping fashion, locking and breaking his elbow from the punch. Uh, would you repeat that, Jim? Yes, in a simple manner, you can dislocate or easily break his arm from a punch. The shoulder joint is also quite easy to break. When you take your opponent down in a pin, in this fashion, you simply have to step across his body and lean on his extended arm and tear it right at the shoulder joint. For killing, for a quick kill, Aketoist would break the neck. This will instantly kill a person. From a front punch, as Jim launches a punch, I would block it, step around behind it, lead him down, and at this point, snap his neck. Let me review that one more time. This is a very dangerous technique. As he punches, I would evade it, lead him down and around, and at this point, with both hands, a very quick twist would break his neck. Now, many instances of self-defense involve more than one attacker. What we're going to demonstrate for you is two-man attacks, or two-man body grabs. And uh, the first will be, each man will be holding me with two hands. A little closer, please. Now, what I'm going to try to do here is escape from them. And in order to do that, I have to have hold of both men. So as I raise up my hands, I twist my right hand onto this opponent's wrist and my left onto this opponent's wrist. I've stepped out with my right foot. Now I'm going to quickly pivot, and as I pivot, I'm going to bring both men together, tie up their balance, and drop them. Now watch again. This particular technique, uh, first of all, don't panic when uh, two men grab you. Stay as relaxed as you can. Step out. At the same time you step out, raise, raise both hands, grasp one opponent by the wrist, Grasp the other by the wrist, turn your body, step through, and pull them both together so they both lose their balance. Now at realistic speed, we'll demonstrate the same technique.
This next two-man technique requires a bit of practice and training in order to accomplish it successfully. Uh, please watch. Hold a little tighter, please. As I step forward, I raise both opponents upward. And I simply cut down quickly in order to revolve both of them. Now watch this technique again, please. <clears throat> when, you're first, uh, when your opponents first grab you, you would lead them downward and then upward, loading their key onto your arms, and simply draw forward, throw them both. Uh, this next two-man technique I will demonstrate will involve the uh, ridding myself of one man and throwing the other. As both men grab me, I turn this opponent's hand and wrist over, cut downward, and push him away. I step through this man and throw him end over end. Uh, once more again, slowly. When I'm grabbed by the two opponents, I rotate my wrist and arm upward into this position, locking his elbow with his own grip on my wrist. I then will cut down and push this man away. I will then pivot with this man and throw him. Uh, this situation, this two-man assault, one will be choking me and another will approach and grab me while the first man is choking me. Please watch. Slowly. Now, with this man choking me, I have very little time and air left, so I have to move quickly. I'll step through, grabbing this man by the wrist. As I continue to step through, I will reach over and hold this man by the forearm and wrist. I'll step through and pull both of them together. Now we shall do it again slowly. One opponent grabs me in a choke. Second opponent has my arm. I'll grasp him by the wrist. I'll step through. As I'm stepping through, I will grab this opponent at the wrist juncture, step through, pulling them together and falling.
Uh, this next two-man defense, one will grab me in a bear hug, and the other will attempt to hit me with a strike. I throw one man off my back and into the other. Very fast, very successful technique. Uh, we'll review this technique, and I'll uh, further explain it as we go along. When this opponent bear hugs me and is holding me tightly, and this opponent steps forward to throw a punch at me, I will lower my body, loading this opponent up on my hips, thrusting my hips forward and into the opponent who is attempting to punch me. Uh, we will do this technique at uh, full speed. This is a dangerous situation, this next defense. But with training, you can prevent your life from being lost. Please watch. This man grabs and chokes me. The other is about to approach me with a knife. I turn my body into his grasp, grab his wrist at this point. I then step through, grabbing his hand, step back, rotate him into a throw. My other attacker approaches me. I lead him around and into a fall, taking the knife away. Watch it again, please. I will do this uh, technique at realistic speed using this man to keep this man off me temporarily until I can defeat his attack. This uh, next technique will be done with one man throwing a punch at me and the other following up with a baseball bat. Uh, please watch. I throw this man, and as this man comes in, at this point, I grab his sleeves or his arms and rotate them. 
uh, watch now from this angle. Uh, this man will uh, attempt to punch me, and this man will attempt to hit me with the bat. You throw this man in a circular motion. As this man steps up and through, I reach here, pivoting my leg behind me, keeping him off balance and continuing his motion into a throw. Now watch this technique at full speed. Uh, this next assault by two men will be done using individual technique on each man. Please watch. This man will grab me by the shoulder and this by the arm. I will push up on this man's elbow, drawing the other man into me at the same time. I'll then raise my knee into the other man's chin and throw him down. This man, I will turn my wrist in his hand, step through, and throw him. Now, watch the dynamics of these techniques again, please. This man attacks me, grabbing me here. The other man grabs me with two hands on the arm. As I rotate this man into a locked elbow and knee him in the face, this man, I turn, grasp his wrist, Step through and throw him. This uh, next two-man technique will involve this man attacking me from this side and this man attacking me from this side. As this man attacks me, I will put my left arm out, slide this man off my thigh. As this man steps through, I will block him here, pass his hand down here, step through, and throw him. I then pull him over and put him into a painful pen. As I bring my opponent to the ground, I have his hand clasped with this hand, my forearm and wrist in the crook of his elbow. Now I lean forward, causing him intense pain, and to keep him down, I put my elbow on his small of his back and push up with my forearm and hand. 
causing intense pain. Uh, this next two-man scenario will involve this man grabbing me with two hands. As this man approaches me, I will launch a kick to his midsection, knocking him down. At this point, I will step forward with this foot holding my other opponent in, the, in uh, this grasp and throw him. Now we will uh, perform this at full speed. In this next two-man uh, situation, you're pinned against the wall by the two men. One has you grasped from both sides, and the other has his hand into your throat. You will reach up quickly, grabbing the sleeve of this man, twisting your wrist to grasp your other opponent. Then you will step forward. At this point, you will launch both men into a throw. Now watch this at full speed, please. In this self-defense scenario, even though you're sitting, you still can handle 
two men at the same time. I'll proceed to demonstrate. Uh, Jim will attack me with a punch, forcing his head down. I now block, make a circular motion, lock the elbow of my other point, and take him down. Now watch at realistic speed. This uh, next scenario involves uh, a man with a knife. The man closest to me will attack me first by grabbing me and attempting to choke me. At this point, I will elbow him in the groin, reach up, grab his sleeve, pull forward, and throw him. As the knife man approaches, I will evade the knife, twist his wrist, place it into the other hand, take him down in a painful lock, put my foot on the back of his neck and lock him until the knife falls out of his hand. The wrist is painfully locked as well as the elbow. Now pressure downward on the fingers will produce intense pain. Now we will perform this at a realistic speed. <coughs> This self-defense scenario, again, involves two men. This man will attack me with a punch. As he punches, I evade his punch, push down on his attacking hand into this position. I then twist upward. He goes down, I push him away. This man comes around to attack me, using his balance 
as motion to throw him.
I hope you have enjoyed viewing this videotape. I've spent a lot of time and effort to make these techniques practical. They can be adapted to anybody's style. Practice them carefully, and they will be very useful to you. Thank you. We're speaking with renowned East Coast Aikido master, Mr. Robert Leike. Thank you very much, Bob, for coming. Thanks, Joe. Let's start from the beginning. When did you first uh, get involved in the martial arts? Well, I got involved when I returned from California in 1960. I got involved in a judo class. Uh, I was pretty fascinated with uh, judo for a while, and then uh, I had this thing called karate come along, and uh, I began training in karate. And I really loved that, and it seemed to suit me uh, uh, very well. But after I had practiced for a, a number of years, uh, apparently the aggression in me uh, started to come out, and I began to hurt myself every time I sparred with somebody. I'd break a, a finger or I'd break <laughs> a toe. And eventually, it got to cost me so much time from my job that uh, I couldn't afford to continue in the arts. So in, kind of in desperation, I call up a, a local school and I ask them, what do you have uh, that I can do that doesn't involve sparring? And they say, well, we have uh, Aikido. And I had never heard of Aikido up until that point. And what was the year again? This was 1970. Mm -hmm. And I went down to the school and I watched twice through a, a little crack in the window uh, without ever going inside. But the third time I went down there, I went down prepared to sign up. I went in and joined, and uh, uh, that's 23 years ago, and I've been doing it uh, religiously ever since. Who was the instructor at the time? The instructor was Insu Wong, a seventh Dan in uh, Judo. Uh, he was also uh, ranked sixth degree in uh, Taekwondo and uh, sixth degree in uh, Aikido. Now, what was it about Aikido that uh, drew you to the art? Well, uh, it's really hard to, uh, to describe it, but uh, this particular school was far more aggressive uh, than I had uh, originally anticipated. And I had to develop, uh, well, kind of uh, self-protection in order to practice safely, which, of course, I did. I, I've never been hurt uh, in Aikido in 23 years. But the more I practiced this art, the more I fell in love with it. I just... Uh, just overwhelmed by its, uh, its beauty, uh, its seeming uh, sophistication and simpleness. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful, healthy uh, way of uh, uh, life. It really is. What is Aikido exactly? Please explain. Well, it's a system of uh, uh, joint locks and manipulations. And uh, it's powered by this unseen energy called Ki. Now, there's actually, there's two kinds of key. There's the hard key and there's the soft key. Aikido is mostly the soft key, which means that uh, instead of being very aggressive, you have to be less than aggressive, uh, close to being passive. Although Aikido is, uh, you might say Aikido is would step back one step and then defend, whereas uh, uh, the average person uh, might not step back, but we would give way one step uh, as a defense. And is Aikido an effective self-defense art? Yeah, and actually it's, it's really underrated mm -hmm. uh, because it is very sophisticated. Uh, it's also uh, kind of difficult to learn, uh, more difficult than most of the other arts. It takes a long time to master it, but once mastered, there's a certain uh, grace and beauty about it that is uh, just wonderful. What techniques about Aikido make it an effective uh, self-defense art and martial art? Well, uh, there's so much pain involved in Aikido. For instance, through a proper wrist lock, uh, you can literally cause a person's hair to stand up from the pain alone. <laughs> uh, not, not also not saying that you can't break each and every joint if it was necessary, uh, but the uh, passiveness of Aikido means it's, uh, it's not aggressive. We're, we're not the kind of people who start fights, but we're kind of people who uh, end them as uh, easily as possible. And what is the, um, the heart of Aikido as far as the technique goes? What, goes? what does it concentrate on in its teachings? Well, 
I think uh, really it concentrates on teaching you to become a better person, to understand yourself better, uh, to develop your uh, healthy attitudes, uh, both menta mentally and physically. Uh, the development of this power of key uh, is uh, it's kind of unusual. It's hard to explain. Uh, you actually don't even feel key until you've uh, spent perhaps 10 years uh, involved in a practice of it. Uh, but its health aspects are wonderful. Now they talk about a Aikido using someone's force against themselves, mm -hmm. centrifugal force, etc. Uh, explain how a smaller pers can, person can handle someone who's very aggressive, uh, maybe twice their weight. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say someone, uh, uh, some, a larger person reaches forward and steps forward to grasp a smaller person. Now the elements of that movement are enough to unbalance the person using, using Aikido techniques for the smaller person to unbalance the larger. Once imbalanced, the person has virtually no control over their body. And uh, not only can their joints be manipulated, but they can be thrown end over end from something as simple as a reach. So a great deal of strength is not needed to execute that Absolutely. Uh, well, one of the things uh, that we first begin to teach is a breathing technique uh, that, uh, that teaches the student uh, how to overcome uh, resistance. And uh, a smaller person, uh, once grasped even by a larger, stronger person, can overcome that resistance through this kind of movement, total body movement. Not, not moving a single limb, but moving as a unit. Uh, this makes you far stronger uh, in, uh, in overcoming somebody's grip, for instance, since they're only using their arm. Now, are there any actual kill techniques in Aikido? Oh, oh yes, there is. Uh, wow. One of the, probably one of the fastest killing arts is Aikido, and it's done through the breaking of the neck. Exactly. Uh, all, from, uh, from almost any kind of attack, front or rear, mm -hmm. we could uh, quickly spin around and break the neck of an attacker. This is not what an Aikidoist would want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, killing somebody is, uh, is not... Uh, not uh, really Aikido. Now why do you think there's very few Aikido schools in the world today as opposed to Karate and Taekwondo? Well, because uh, very truthfully the world is a very aggressive place. Uh, some of the more popular sports are what? Football, hockey, they're all, uh, they're all aggressive uh, sports. Uh, there's uh, injuries all the time. Mm -hmm. And because people are aggressive, they like to see aggressive things. Take, go back to the days of the Romans. And you'll see that uh, that's the way we are. And uh, Aikido being the opposite end of this spectrum, not aggressive, uh, a lot of people uh, don't see any value in it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, well, uh, you didn't punch him or kick him, so uh, <laughs> gee, I, I can't see how you're going to, uh, and they don't see pain unless you're screaming and hollering from it. Right. So uh, people generally have a, a misunderstanding of the art to begin with. And since Aikido does attract a lot of passive people, and it is not always taught uh, as a useful martial art, it's taught more ritualistic and uh, uh, more dance-like, uh, which is just as healthy to practice as any other method, uh, but not necessarily uh, concentrating on uh, self-defense. I primarily see Aikido as being a very practical uh, defense system, and that's the way I teach it. Uh, perhaps not as uh, ritualistic as most Aikido, mm -hmm. traditional Aikido. I do not uh, teach in the traditional method mm -hmm. because uh, I found that uh, it takes uh, much longer to learn the, uh, uh, the value of the art uh, uh, through a traditional method than the one I've, uh, I've discovered on my own. What do you think of Steven Seagal's portrayal of Aikido in his movies? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think the Aikido uh, uh, world itself uh, is, uh, is very uh, happy about the way Mr. Uh, Seagal uh, does uh, uh, his Aikido. However, I see it as a, a wonderful way of developing Aikido throughout the country because that is what people see. Now, once they get into school, uh, then you can teach them to become less and less uh, aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I'm a Scorpio, which are known to be aggressive people. And uh, over the years, uh, that uh, aggression has been uh, uh, literally uh, squeezed out of me through the Aikido. 
and tell us about your school. Well, I have a school in New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, I have close to 100 students, which makes uh, a decent sized uh, Aikido school. Uh, most of my students, like other Aikido schools, are mostly professionals. I would say probably 90% of them are college graduates. I have engineers, I have uh, uh, doctors, uh, attorneys. I have a lot of uh, police and correctional officers because uh, they cannot use karate mm -hmm. uh, uh, for fear of brutality suits. And Aikido suits them fine, and it works quite well for their jobs. There's, uh, I, I've heard a lot of funny stories from my police officers on, on their use of Aikido. And tell us about your ranking system. Uh, do you go by belts? How does a student acquire a black belt in Aikido? Well, uh, in my school, mm -hmm. we, we use the uh, uh, colored belt system. Uh, in some traditional schools, they go from white to black, uh, never, never changing color uh, through the cues. But we use the uh, uh, white belt, yellow belt, green belt, uh, three grades of brown, and then black belt. And it normally will take the average person training perhaps three times a week. It would take them probably three and a half to four years to make black belt. However, by black belt, they need to be able to demonstrate uh, within a 35 minute period, 150 techniques minimum, mm -hmm. defense against a real knife, club, and a multiple attack of five men must be done credibly well in order to achieve their black belts. And they, uh, since, uh, since I been, uh, began teaching, I've made uh, 35 black belts. That's great. And I have currently uh, nine still practicing. What makes a good student in Aikido? Well, attitude is, yeah. uh, attitude and dedication is uh, really uh, the key elements to a good student. Uh, for instance, my partner, uh, uh, Jim Bonasconi, who worked with me on the videos, is an excellent student. Uh, he's also my son-in-law, mm -hmm. married my daughter. And he has all the, uh, all the qualities that uh, I look for in a student. Uh, I'm very fortunate with the kind of students that I have attracted over the years. Now, you've done a series of videos with Panther Productions. What do you hope your videos teach the public? Well. Uh, basically, I hope to teach them practical self-defense, but also with the hope that they never need to use it. Uh, as far as uh, defense, you know, there, there are ways of discouraging people rather than fighting with them, and it is more a mental uh, thing than a physical thing. For instance, confrontations. Uh, instead of uh, entering into a confrontation, you can sometimes avoid it without, uh, without escalating uh, into uh, a fight of some kind. And how does that attitude develop? Well, it develops with a, a lot of practice and having it pounded out of you uh, through uh, some of the throwing techniques, so to speak. Uh, my workouts are very hard in the school. We concentrate on... Uh, uh, half an hour of uh, calisthenics and preparatory exercises. We do uh, a technique repetitiously on count. Uh, this is uh, quite strenuous. And I always leave them with a half an hour of freestyle practice. And during the freestyle practice, each new student works with an advanced student who then teaches them the basic techniques one-on-one -on -one until they are very familiar with this. Uh, I stress the basics. Uh, uh, constantly. It's very important, uh, just the basic techniques. What are your favorite techniques in Aikido? Well, you see, my, uh, my techniques, uh, really my favorite are throwing. Mm -hmm. I, I love, uh, love the throwing techniques of Aikido. And for me, they're quite uh, easy and simple to do. And they're beautiful to watch. And I, I just love to, love to do them. I love to entertain people with them. <laughs> now, you're available for seminars. You've traveled all up and down the East Coast. And You've actually done some in Paris, I believe. Yes, France. I have. Paris, uh, Bermuda, I've done them, California, tell, tell uh, throughout us, the South. Tell us about your seminars and what you teach and who comes and how people can get in touch with you. Well, recently uh, I did one in Boston that had 120 participants. Mm -hmm. And not only Aikido people, uh, many, many uh, karate people come to these mm -hmm. seminars because I teach a lot of basic grabbing uh, techniques that are very effective and very useful. 
I get a lot of police officers in the mm -hmm. uh, seminars because of the uh, come along techniques that I teach uh, as well. Uh, I do not teach a lot of techniques in a seminar because people who come to my seminars, I want them to learn something and I want it to be useful for them, something that they can take home and uh, continue to practice. And how do you handle people in the seminar who might be strongly embedded in karate or their Well, I, uh, believe it or not, I handle them pretty easily. <laughs> uh, anybody who is in a seminar, and they usually will pick the largest people in the seminar, uh, because there are some people who doubt right. Aikido will work. Mm -hmm. And after, uh, well, after a few minutes, uh, they lose their doubts. Yeah. I recall a time when I, uh, I do programs for uh, uh, Connecticut Correctional Facilities. And the first program I did, uh, I walked into a room with 10 huge correctional officers <laughs> who had encountered Aikido through a woman teaching them yeah. Uh, who apparently did not have all that much experience in it. So they were very doubtful. Mm -hmm. And uh, within five minutes, they were calling me, sir. <laughs> so it works. It works. Now, what words of advice do you have for our viewing audience before we close? Well, if you, uh, if you like to get involved in this art, uh, plan on putting in the time. You know, many people uh, are dreamers who just... Uh, Oh, well, gee, I think I'd like to try it. Well, don't try it, Keto. Either commit yourself to it or don't do it, period. Mm -hmm. That's uh, probably the best advice I can give to anyone uh, who is interested in, uh, in Aikido. If you're going to do it, do it. And how does the future of Aikido look today? Well, I think Aikido has a great future. Uh, years ago, it was judo. Mm -hmm. And then after judo, became karate. Mm -hmm. Now after karate is Aikido. Right. And I think it will probably grow into uh, the most popular martial art uh, ever. I really do. Well, thank you very much, Master. We appreciate all your insights. Thank you, Joe. Thank it you. was nice talking with you.